Today we're going to be talking about how to use SolidWorks 3D models in PowerPoint presentations. And not just as screen capture or rendering clip art, but actual 3D models. Let's go ahead and get started. So we actually can do two different formats out of SolidWorks that can be read directly into PowerPoint files as 3D models. 3MF and GLB files. So you might, first thing you're going to ask me is, okay, Jeff, which format should I use? Which one is better? Well, it depends. The 3MF format, which is also kind of the next generation STL file for 3D printing, it's called 3D manufacturing format, has better color and material fidelity. So what you see in the model in SOLIDWORKS is going to more closely be matched in this format than another the other format the GLP uh, the file size is a lot smaller and 3MFs are also directly readable in pretty much all Microsoft products including Windows built-in uh, 3D viewer which you may not even know you had but yeah you can double click on a 3MF file in just Windows and it'll come up in the Microsoft viewer and you can look at it and stuff like that so that's nice uh, cons well it kind of depends on if you look at them as a major deal or not. Uh, the 3MF files are designed for 3D printing. So if someone has a 3MF file, they're going to be able to just go ahead and put in the 3D printing software and print it. If that's a problem or not, that's up to you. The files that are kicked out in 3MF format are Z up. So their orientation will be different than you normally see in SOLIDWORKS. That's actually something we can fix pretty easily in SOLIDWORKS. So we'll talk about that, but that's, so that's a minor thing. Um, and then one last thing is uh, 3MF files don't carry an exploded view at all. So in SOLIDWORKS, if you want to explode your model out and then you want to take that exploded view model and put it in your PowerPoint, 3MF is not going to work for you because when you open up the resulting model in the PowerPoint, it will not be exploded. On the other hand, GLB, which is directly usable for virtual reality, extended reality applications, which again, one of its pros, once you kick a GLB file out, it can be used in those kind of things if you want to. The file is YUP, um, and then also, if you have your model exploded at the time you create the GLB file out of SOLIDWORKS, that resulting GLB file will be exploded. So when you look at it in uh, PowerPoint, for example, or whatever, it's going to be an ex exploded state. So if you want to carry an exploded model out to your PowerPoint, even though you have less color material fidelity, a much bigger file size, and the file itself is may or may not actually come up in other Microsoft products like the viewer, if you want to carry that exploded view, you're going to need to use the GLB format. Otherwise, if you're not going to do that, um, I recommend just uh, starting with the 3MF file and use it that way. So if you have a model like this in SOLIDWORKS, this is in SOLIDWORKS 2025 SP0, and you can see the color and you can see the, the um, texture, the visual textures and whatnot on there. When I save this in the 3MF file and the GLB file just straight out, uh, this is what you get in PowerPoint. So the first thing you notice um, is the orientation is different. The 3MF file is Z up, so it acts a little differently. But the other thing you're going to notice is that um, the 3MF file colors are a lot more um, similar to what it is shown in SOLIDWORKS versus the GLB. It kind of lightens things up and shifts things over a little bit in the color hue um, spectrum there. So that's to be aware. Now, if you're making a a 3MF file and you want to have um, that Z up problem go away, it's actually pretty easy in SOLIDWORKS. You just define a coordinate system that uh, rotates uh, the uh, X axis 90 degrees in the negative direction. And when you output your 3MF file, use that coordinate system that you just created um, to output it. And then it'll come in to PowerPoint and everything, the orientation you would expect. So for example, the year before this, I recorded this. I created our for our holiday model. I went into uh, 
X uh, design or, or X app uh, for prismatic modeling, and I created the uh, Island of Misfit Toys, uh, the uh, Choo Choo with the square wheels. And I, you know, that's more of a blue kind of aquamarine color. And in SolidWorks, uh, when you kick out a 3MF file, this looks a little better and then in color than it does in the GLB. But in fact, either model works. And in my PowerPoint here, this is an, these are actual 3D models. If I advance a slide, you can see that it's not just a snap from one picture orientation to another. It's actually rotating it. And if I hit the back button in my slide, I'm just going backwards in my slideshow, it rotates the other way. So you can see as we go back and forth how we have color uh, changing, the shading, the shadows, the highlights, all that stuff. And this is the benefit of taking a 3D model out of SOLIDWORKS and using it in PowerPoint because it's really easy to make these sort of interactive presentations for marketing, for internal um, design reviews or you know, trade shore stuff or whatever you want to do. So how do we actually accomplish this? I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting my PowerPoint, but I'm going to add a new slide here. And this slide is going to be uh, where I'm going to kick out another model and put it under my PowerPoint. So we'll show you how to do this. Let's go over to SOLIDWORKS where I have another holiday model from the past. I think this was, done, I did this in like 2014 or something. It's one of these uh, uh, angel chimes things that you put together and you put candles here and the rising air pushes uh, on the impeller here and it turns the angels in their little, these little sticks uh, gently hit the, uh, the, the bells. It's kind of a fun thing. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I wanna say this out, um, first of all, um, I'm going to save it out as just a 3MF file because I want the best color rendition and the smallest file format. So the, before I do that, though, I know I'm going to want to have uh, this thing to be uh, ready for the Z-Up nature of 3MF. So let's go ahead. Ask key in your keyboard is the shortcut for any command you want, even ones you don't norm normally use, like uh, coordinate system. So let's go ahead and go to the coordinate system command. I'm going to make a new coordinate system. And this is also relatively recent in SOLIDWORKS in the last couple of years where we can define positions with numeric values directly. So this makes it really easy to make a coordinate system add 0, 0, 0 in position and the same rotation as the default. You can see here Y, X, and Z. And here's the new one being built. Except for in this case here, I'm going to say negative 90 uh, rotation angle on the X that puts my um, my Z up in this current system here, which is what I'm looking for. So okay, and we'll do this. And just for clarity, I'm going to name this Z up because that's what it is. Okay, so now I've done that simple step. Now when I go ahead and save this as a 3MF file, save as and find 3MF right here for output coordinate system. Instead of using my def the default one in SOLIDWORKS, I'm gonna say Z up, the one I just made, and then we'll go ahead and save it out. It'll process that, it'll confirm that it's going to have a material converted out, which yeah, we're gonna do that. And now we have that file saved out. So if I go back to my PowerPoint here, let's go into my Windows Explorer, here's that file I just created, this Chimes 3MF, I'll drag and drop it into my PowerPoint, and there it is. So it looks like clip art, except that if I grab the middle here, I can rotate it to any orientation I would like. So let's go ahead and kind of start it off like sort of like this. Okay, now how, do I, how am I animating this? Well, the, the animation comes from basically duplicating slides, And then I'll come into the second slide here and like, let's rotate it like this a little bit. And then here's the key to get that 3D animation to work. For our slide transition, we're going to use the morph transition. And you'll see that's what it's going to do. Let's duplicate that same slide again. And I'll come in here and uh, let's do something like this. 
And again, we want that more transition. As I duplicate the slide, it's gonna carry that same transition over. So let's go back here and let's go ahead and play our PowerPoint. So here's the first slide on my set here. I just hit next on my keyboard here and I hit next on my keyboard again and you can see how that actually rotates the model. And if I hit back, hit back, then go back and forth in all these sequences here. So I can just keep making duplicate slides and change the orientation. I can build a nice sort of um, animation a camera review of any model I want. And of course, being PowerPoint, I can also have the resulting slide have, you know, text and, and arrows pointing things out or whatever I want to do. So it's a really easy way to do that. Now, as I mentioned, um, the 3MF file uh, format does not carry uh, exploded view information into it. So that if I want to make another slide here, an empty one, and I'm going to instead use the GLB format because I want to show this in an exploded state. Okay, well, let's go back to SOLIDWORKS now. And I do have an exploded view. It's the exploded view that's active is what it's doing. So you want to have whatever exploded view you, you want active at the time you do it. It's not like the, the, the uh, GLB file can bring over more than one exploded view because it's not really a SOLIDWORKS native file format. But, you know, here we got this. That's about right. And again, I can rotate however I want. But I have the exploded view. Now when it's exploded, I'm going to go to File and Save As. And instead of a 3MF file, because I know that it does not carry the exploded uh, state, I'm going to find the Extend Reality Binary GLB format, which also I know will go into uh, Microsoft Proc. So I'll do that. Now one gotcha here. Um, when we reinstate the ability to do GLB and GLTF file formats, export directly from SOLIDWORKS, I think it was in 2024, um, one of the, the features was not only that we could do it again, but also that we um, supported the Draco compression protocol, which made the files a lot smaller. Unfortunately, at this time, Microsoft products do not recognize GLB files with Draco compression turned on. So if you just hit save and do it, it, it won't, it'll say it's not something we could bring in. So you gotta make sure you turn that compression off. All right. And then once you do that, now go ahead and save the file. It'll process that for a moment or two here. And now that that's done, let's go back to our PowerPoint and go back to our files. And here we have the GLB file, and I'll bring it in. And you can see that, again, visually it's a little different. It's just generally lighter is what it is. Um, but it's in that exploded state so that we can go ahead and do something like this. And then duplicate the slide, and then take this guy, and let's rotate it like further over like this. And then again, I'm going to use the morph transition on that second slide. And there we go. So in between slides here from one to the other, maybe I'll do a fade slide here. Um, it won't morph between the two formats. Morph is specifically for the exact same information. So that's why we're doing two different sets here. But let's go back to the beginning and look at our sequence here. So I start here. I advance this way. The nice colors that I like. Then we're actually going to transition to another set of slides, which basically have the GLB file in them so that those, the morph can recognize as I go back and forth, forward and backwards here. So that's an overview of how to take your SOLIDWORKS 3D models into PowerPoint as 3D models and animate them for design reviews, marketing purposes, or trade shows, etc. So any questions? Go ahead and contact us at GSC and Elson Technologies Company. We'd be happy to help you. Thanks and have a great day.